Hello, my name is Kate, and I'm gonna tell you about the reptile who can give you a petrifying wink in D&D. Basilisks are large eight-legged reptiles living all over Faerun who are able to petrify enemy with their gaze. They can be found on material planes and even the elemental plane of Earth. They are scattered around Sword Coast lands and were spotted atop Stoneness Needle onto a labyrinth under mountain and other areas, especially caves and underdark tunnels. To tell you lore on these creatures, I ask our very lucky reporter Ekaterina the Explorer from Pyronian Geographic to deep dive and tell us all about basilisks. Ekaterina, over to you. Hello, Kate. Yes, thank you. It's very flattering. Though it's my proficiency in survival skills that helped me to avoid danger. I'm currently at the giant plains and you can see troll mountains behind my back. I expect to find the basilisk lair here in the cavities near the mountains. Well, uh, good luck and let us hear what you can tell us about basilisks. I came closer to the mountains and stumbled upon this statue. It is the first sign that we are close to the basilisk hunting area, as nobody ever would carve the statue in the middle of nowhere. Basilisk usually live in arid, tropical or temperate climates where it's most comfortable to them. They usually layer in dense holes, cavities, caves or deep in the underground tunnels. And of course, the most important criteria is abundancy of food and water supply. Due to their reptilian heritage, they have cold blood, so they can't survive long without a constant heat source. The cold blood dictates their way of life and behavior and habitability areas. Like most of the reptiles, they spend most of the time in half-dormant state on the sun or near stable heat source such as lava pits, geysers or volcanic holes. But unlike most reptiles, basilisks are still quite tolerant to a wide range of temperatures and store heat efficiently in their organs, which helps them to remain active during nights, even in demi-seasons. If the basilisk is unable to warm itself for more than a day, it will become slow and weak and ultimately die of hypothermia in the next few days. I think we've definitely found the lair of the basilisk. Look around behind me on all those statues. Some of them are crushed, because when food supply is scarce, basilisk can eat on their petrified victims. Basilisk are very easy to anger, especially if they haven't eaten long enough. They start to act irrational and aggressive, so we have to be careful. We can distinguish the aggressive behavior by the hissing sound like a snake coming from its tongue. We are now will try to approach its lair, and we better keep distance of 25 meters just to avoid being petrified by its beautiful eyes. Basilisk has eight legs four on each side, though the legs don't help much as the movement speed of the creature is about 3.6 km per hour or 2.2 miles per hour. The skin of the creature varies depending on the area of habitat. Dark grey for underground species to dark orange for arid areas. The skeletal carcass contains a single row of spines that supports up to 300 pounds or 140 kilograms of total basilisk mass, as well as acts as a defensive measure against intruders. We have now approached the lair entrance and are now hiding behind this not very lucky adventurer. I'm not going to use greater restoration spell on him not to alert the creature of my presence. With slow metabolism, the creature usually conserves energy and heat by sleeping. Basilisks have a very huge digestive system with lots of chemical elements able to turn stone back to normal flesh and digest it. The creatures turned to stone are not actually dead, they are in a transitional phase between being alive, being dead and being asleep. When the petrified chunk goes 
to the mouth of the creature, chemical elements in the saliva turns it back to the flesh so basilisk can get all the nutrients it wants. The most popular prey of basilisk are usually small mammals such as birds, mice, carrion, fish and also berries which are low to the ground. They can also eat adventurers of any humanoid being who is not careful enough to get into ambush or gazed upon the creature. Yet with slow metabolism such big meals are not frequent and the creature is usually sated with one per month. Given a higher than average food supply, for example abundance of humanoid prey, a basilisk could regrow lost limbs and tail when well fed through one to four months time. Being a slow creature, basilisk trusts in its instincts and magical abilities. The creature usually ambushes the prey from the hidden location, quickly dashing in a 30 feet or 6 meters distance to catch it with its petrifying gaze. It can also bite the victim with its jaws, trying to inject poison inside the blood system. Though the poison does not have a paralyzing effect, it still weakens the enemy. The clear eyesight increases the chances of being petrified at a greater distances. So that's why we will stay and watch the creature from afar without using any magic devices or spine magic such as arcane eye. The structure of basilisk eye is like of any other reptile. It has two transparent eyelid membranes which it can control independently. Inside the eye, special nerve channels are extremely sensitive to light and heat, which help reptiles to see in the dark up to 20 meters far or 60 feet far, and helps to search for warp spots in the darkness. The upper eyelid overlaps the lower one. When both are closed, the eye is in transparent protective cocoon, yet allowing the creature to see in the distance like any other creature. The creature can slightly increase the observable distance by lifting one of the eyelids, increasing eye exposure to the light. When its lower eyelid is also drawn back, the eye of the creature is barely naked and can emit petrification particles. Since basilisk's eye are situated as of salamander or lizard on the both sides of her head, it means that the vision range of the creature is almost circular, which means that basilisk can petrify everyone in 260 degree arc. The feared petrification ability is researched by many sages across Phyron. The bare eye of a creature radiates particles that pierces through the victim's body, activating changes on the chemical level. The chemical process of turning cells into hardened stone probably triggered when victim has an eye contact with the basilisk. Turned victims are immediately paralyzed, losing all abilities of sight, speech or feel. The turning process suffocates the victim, putting it into the state of near-death slumber. Yet, there are cases where the brain activity stayed intact, when the magical artifacts powered up the body with alternative air supply. However, the longer the victim stays in the stone alive, the greater are the chances of insanity due to deprivation. I will now try to approach basilisk a little bit closer, as I believe this area is perfect for mating and we can try find its pair. I will need to do it in stealth and in silence, so while I'm doing it, I'm passing it over to you, Kate. Thank you, Ekaterina. So, so far so good, as they say, and while our reckless explorer deeps dive in a cave full of basilisks, let me tell you a little bit of fun facts about them too. The race of Badin, who inhabited southern Anaurok Desert, called Basilisk Hagar Motab, or bringers of stone death. There are no cases of fewer greater basilisks, which are not common on material planes. The greater basilisks the shorter the range of its petrifying gaze. Yet, the rarest of all are abyssal greater basilisks, which could be found in the underworld of the abyss. Basilisk parts are in extreme demand by sages and alchemists, who use creatures' organs as reagents and research components. One can sell an eyeball of the basilisk for 1000 gold, an eyelid for 400 gold, and an egg for 500 gold. Some even sold hatchlings for domestication and turning them into guardians. 
Uh, oh, I see, yes, uh, and I see Ekaterina is back to us. So, Ekaterina, is everything okay? Absolutely. I managed to find the closest safer location to observe the creatures. And yes, I mean creatures, because as I expected, we found here a mating pair. Every four years, during summers, young adults start to search for mate. They start to discern the mate by hearing and smelling rather than sight, to avoid accidental petrification. Once a reptile finds its pair, both start to search for water supply, where the consuming will begin. Water not only lifts heavy bodies, but also helps to nourish the eggs. The female lay one to eight eggs of fist size after a couple of days after mating and buried them into sand or mud near the water source. Unlike bird eggs with strong shell, basilisk eggs have soft surface, which helps to withstand crowding. Only 5% of eggs prove to be infertile and usually serve as a first supply of nutrients to newborns. The nesting period of eggs is 4 to 6 weeks, after which the young basilisks are born, who reach the full grown size in about 4 to 6 months and leave parents when they are ready to mate. I think we need to leave the cave before the night is over and the basilisks woke up. Uh, yes, sure, it's a good idea, but maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the uh, strong and weak points of the creature? Ah, of course, of course. I have just dimensioned door outside to the entrance to the safe location where I can continue and finish the story. Basilisks possess very good dark vision, which renders any advantage to hide in the darkness against it. It also possess strong spinal spines, which prove useful against melee attacks. Yet the petrification gaze cannot touch transformed forms, so those in gaseous form are immune to it. Pay attention to basilisk speed. I actually suggest to kite the creature from afar, or keep the distance of at least 23 meters or 70 feet long, just in case the creature decides to dash to you. Lastly, the creatures are said to be very stupid and also vulnerable to own gaze. So if you don't have any starlet means to battle the creature, try to use polished metal armor or shield or mirror to turn its gaze against it. That's all for my report. I'm Ekaterina the Explorer from Firunian Geographic and over What is there, Kate? Why are you Ekaterina waving don't at look me? Back. Well, that was unexpected. Luckily, Ekaterina has a cleric in her crew, and uh, eventually he will save her with a greater restoration spell. Anyway, looking at the stats of the creature from a 5th edition of D&D, it's a creature of challenge rating 3 with 52 hit points and 15 armor class. Though the challenge rating is low, it still can cause some of the trouble to a low level party of adventurers. And now a bit of DM tips on how to play it. Try to ambush your party with the basilisks, as the surprise round would give an additional challenge to the encounter. If you are far away from the party, try to use dash to get as closer as possible to utilize your petrifying gaze ability. And lastly, try to think of a reason why the party needs to engage the basilisk. Is it because of her axe? Or is it a rescue mission of some traveler or villager? Or is it just a random encounter? And that's all on the basilisks. So if you like the lore and would like to support me and Fire Union Geographics, please press like and subscribe button and tell me in the comments below who else you would like to hear about. And see you next time.